my clients here on the tower house. And my dad is Southland Patrician. And um, Sinajini, my grandfather. And the Kedene or Manali. Ruth Russell helped place the power of education in the hands of the Diné. Dedicating over the past 50 years to educating the people of the Navajo, Ruth Russell believes controlling the education of the Navajo is the source to not only maintain the Navajo culture and way of life, but also strengthening the Navajo people to better their lives. When we talk about culture, you know, that's uh, some of them don't even know their culture. Some of them come from, um, they've been, they've been relocationed on, uh, uh, St. Louis or Los Angeles or you know Chicago or whatever. So they hear this, this the college on the reservation, and and they want to come back. The most important thing is they want to come back. They want to learn about the culture. They want to learn about who they are. So it was real sad in my class, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of some of them I don't speak Navajo and I don't know anything about it. Their tears coming down. It's just, it's just really, really, really touchy in those things. So I tell them about it, a lot of things, you know. This is what makes you a Navajo, you know. You may not speak your language, but you can read about all these things, and that what makes you a really strong person, I'd say. Ruth helped create Navajo Community College, now Dinette College, in 1968. The goal was to take the Navajo curriculum to the level of higher education. She came in at a time, it's not like you had all these Navajo leaders. You still only had a handful of Navajo leaders. But I think at the same time, I think there, it was a period of time where people were trying to find different voices and were open to listen. She could talk about the young people. She could talk about, you know, the next generation from a woman's perspective that I think, you know, resonated with people. I always have encouraged them to, you know, to learn the beginning and the, uh, the roots of where is, you know, the culture really coming from. If I was a student, I would say, you know, here's somebody that's dressed traditionally and maybe I should pay attention, you know. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it opens an eye. She's very, very fluent in Navajo. In fact, I think she'd rather talk Navajo than English. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to her easier, you might say. But, um, but she's... Um, very knowledgeable in the tradition, and, and I think that's what makes her an icon. Um, she not only dresses, she speaks, and she eats, and she sleeps. Everything's tradition. So I always look at, um, I don't know, I see this child, just like when I was teaching the college, just like I said, their, their tear, their ear, you know, their tear coming down. And I say that I feel sorry for that, you know. And then that really makes me think that these children need to know, need to learn. And uh, so my dad said, if you learn your culture, if you learn what's going around you, and then that makes you strong, that makes you an Navajo. You know, if you don't learn those things, and um, it's just like the tumbleweed that has no roots and rolling down the road, you know. It's just going to be, you know, like that. And so... Working with her husband, Robert Russell, Ruth helped begin the first school board controlled by Navajo in 1957 in Low Mountain. Born June 15, 1934 in Round Rock, Arizona, Ruth Russell grew up in a traditional family from which she learned the Navajo culture and language. I grew close to my dad when I grew up. I always with my dad, I always in the summer when I come back from school, I, then my dad said, well, let's go out and plant the corn, you know. And so we, up there, they don't have a tractor those days. They have horse, team of horse. And then so we're, I was up there, I just, you know, like uh, maybe 12, 13, 13 years old, I was out there with my dad. And so he talks to me a lot, you know, this is what you do, this is what you do. If you don't know these things, someday it's going to be gone, and who's going to teach you? Mm -hmm. Who's going to learn from it? 
At a young age, Ruth's parents pushed her to focus on Western education as well as Navajo traditions and culture. Mom and Dad were very traditional and they taught her these things and she was there to learn it instead of shying away from it and saying, you know, I don't know, I don't have time for that, you know. She was there to learn. Even as a teenager, Ruth embraced her passion towards education. I, I thought that, you know, I always liked to teach, you know, when I was in high school, I always have um, uh, my teacher always says you have to go down to the kindergarten class and to help the teacher. And so I always do that, you know, so I always wanted to, to be with the little kids and all this stuff like that. I think it's her father and her children and she views not children just like, you know, my, myself, and my brothers and sisters, but all Navajo. In 1966, Ruth combined her and her husband's passion for education to create the Rough Rock Demonstration School. Ruth has been very instrumental in making sure that our culture and language is taught here. Um, her and her husband did help start the school along with community members. Had it not been for them, the idea, the concept of teaching Navajo and us being a demonstration school wouldn't have started. My original goal was um, I want the Navajo kids to remain, you know, the Navajo and keep their language and keep their culture and keep the, the value that we makes us a Navajo. So because I've been on the off-reservation when I went to school and all this that, so I learned that when, you know, it wasn't right that um, I look at myself as a, I learned both sides, you know, the culture and then speaking both language. So I thought to myself, when the little kids at Rough Rock should be, you know, learning uh, the language and, and English and read and write and all that kind of stuff like that. And that at the same time, you know, read their own uh, Navajo. We write Navajos, read Navajos too. And so I want them to, to do it. That was my, that was my goal. And also, Navajo people that their the value that uh, that we have or um, uh, how we live and uh, like with Navajo we we believe that have a lot of sheep and have a lot of horse and it makes you rich. That's what we were told when we were small. But um, those those are I think it's really it's really a value to us and Navajo kids and Navajo people today because um, that's one of the things that I wanted to, you know, these young people, young kids, to continue to learn, continue to go out and take care of their last stuff. And, and so that makes in a, you know, a Navajo. And so a lot of things like that. And also a ceremony that we go to. And that's one thing that we don't just walk into the ceremony. We had to be, before we go, we have to be in the shade before we do things like that. So those are sort of things that I look at is, these kids need to know, need to learn all these things. So someday they won't be stuck, you know, somewhere and say not knowing their culture, say not know, not, you know, learn talking their own language. So that, that was my, even like things, how we dress, that was very important to women long time. They have a real full skirt, and then they all wear hairdo, and then they always wear a necklace, they always wear earrings. So that's what makes uh, Navajo women strong and power. And the same way with the men, you know. Uh, my daddy had a long hair, he had the bun in the back, and then, so, he was a medicine man. And then, we had a lot of people like that in the past, and now, now we don't, we have a few, but we have a lot of young people, they came back with the long hair. But that, that's what makes us proud, you know, being a Navajo. So we don't want to lose what, what makes us a Navajo. That was my, my main idea. That was my, my philosophy and education of the, I know one of the things that my mom used to always say is that education was just one of the mechanisms they used to try to reach to help improve the life of the reservation. And they just went through education. 
accomplished? It's accomplished right now. It's um, that we have, um, it, it, it worked, you know, and a lot of Navajo young people, a lot of Navajo people, they, they, they really were learning. They really, they really wanted to be a Navajo woman. Women dress a lot in Navajos and women long time ago. And then also some of the men, they wear, they wear a necklace, they wear a control belt, and so that looks really nice. They wear a moccasin. So, it, and yet they're speaking two language, you know, speaking English and at the same time they're speaking, uh, you know, our Navajo language. And I'll go talk to people, that's what I tell them, you know, what really makes a Navajo is we speak English and we speak Navajo. So we talk to the non-Navajos and then we talk to the Navajo people or young people to keep their, you know, their language and keep the, the way we live in to understand what is uh, the value to us. I always like to say that Rough Rock is an idea, not just a place. That the idea is that Indian people can control their own destinies. That's what Rough Rock symbolizes, not only to the Navajo Nation, but to all of Indian country. I think my mom exemplifies that, and that she is able to go in both worlds, and she does it successfully. If you really look back at the history of Rough Rock, uh, the school board back then were all male, and the planning, the leadership, all of that is male-dominant within the history of our culture. So I think she brought out something that was more female dominant where you know what females can also make plans they can lead they can do something more than just being at home and being the homemaker and taking care of the children and um, you know doing the the woman's work in the home I think she the woman in the home is very important although that is important what she did was she took it a step further where she said you know what we can do that and we can also help in education, our ch educating our children as well. Her whisper was stronger than most people's yells and scream or a chorus of the council, that her whisper was heard and because it came from a place and people felt that place. Well, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just me, myself, that's all. I don't, I don't say that how great I am, but I'm just believing is my believing is who I am, that's all I know. After over 50 years of working to strengthen the culture and language of the Navajo people, Ruth Russell still spends every day working to improve the quality of Navajo education and life. Ruth focuses centrally on the education of the youth because she knows that schools like Rough Rock are the key to strengthening the culture of the Navajo people while also broadening their opportunities within the world today. But again, as I always say, Rough Rock's an idea. Yeah. yeah. Rough Rock's an idea.